Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to write the concept application FRQ, so let's get right to it. Okay, so one of the FRQs you're gonna to have to write is known as the concept application FRQ. Basically, you're gonna be given a couple of paragraphs giving you some kind of scenario about something happening in government. Now, first thing is, don't panic if you read those paragraphs and you don't really know what's going on you're not expected to know anything about the scenario in this FRQ. Most likely, it's gonna involve a political institution and some kind of conflict. So if you're comfortable with your political institutions like the branches of government, or political parties, interest groups, you're gonna be fine, so don't panic. Sometimes the concept application FRQs, like the scenarios, they get really detailed. Don't worry about it. If you know your material, you'll be okay. So let's look at one of the released concept application FRQs from the College Board for some great examples of what to do and what not to do. Okay, start by reading the scenario they give you. Since 2008, the Alliance Defending Freedom, a conservative Christian interest group, has promoted an annual event known as Pulpit Freedom Sunday. All right, so that's our scenario. Now, part A says, describe an action Congress could take to address the concerns of the interest group in the scenario. Okay, so there's two important things to notice in this prompt. First is the action verb describe. So we can't just identify a congressional action, but rather must describe it. And secondly, notice the last three words, in the scenario. Your description of a congressional action must be placed within the scenario they've given you. So a generic answer like Congress could pass a law will not earn the point. That's not a description and it doesn't address the scenario. Remember, every single word in the prompt matters. It's your job to make sure that your response always addresses the entire prompt. So let's look at this sample answer. The second sentence in this answer earns the point, where it says, Congress can accommodate for their needs and pass laws to address the concerns of interest groups that relate to their goal or policy agenda. Now, real quick, if the student stopped there, they would not have earned the point, because up to that point, they had not directly addressed the scenario. But by adding, such as religion in this case, the student has addressed the entire prompt and therefore earns the point. Now look at part B. Once again, your response must directly address the scenario. This time you're told to explain. So this will require you to elaborate. Let's look at a response that would earn the point. Notice that the response specifically addresses partisan divisions in two ways. First, she tells us the direction of the division namely that this is a bill that Republicans would support, and in the second sentence provides a description of partisan divisions. Then she not only asserts that Democratic lawmakers won't support this bill, but also tells us why they won't. And finally, she closes the loop, restating the prompt in the context of the scenario. Now let's look at a response that doesn't earn the point. Why didn't this earn the point? Notice the scoring comment from the College Board. It says that it did not earn the point, because partisan divisions is simply restated and does not provide an example of what it is. So remember, when you're explaining, define all relevant terms. You can't just use the term and assume that the reader knows what it means. You have to put it on paper. So a good explain response describes or defines any relevant terms in the prompt and then explains by elaborating, providing evidence, or giving an example in the context of the prompt and then closes the loop essentially restating the prompt, showing the reader that your answer was responding directly to the prompt. Lastly, Part C is another explain. It says, explain why the Alliance Defending Freedom might argue that their constitutional rights are threatened by the Johnson Amendment. This is pretty clearly a potential free speech violation, but remember, you're explaining, not identifying, so you have to do more than just identify free speech. Look at the sample answer that earned the point. Notice how the FRQ includes each of these elements. What is the Johnson Amendment? What constitutional right is potentially being violated? And then includes an explanation of how the Johnson Amendment is violating that right. And that's pretty much it. That's really all there is to the concept application FRQ. I think you guys are really going to like it, and I know you're going to do great on it. And make sure you check out my other FRQ prep videos, including on the task verbs, the argument essay, so you can be ready for all portions of the AP exam. Until next time, this has been a Lamoney production.
Thanks again for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and check out the ultimate review packet with some great study guides and practice to get you ready for the AP exam. I'll see you next time.